Good morning. Today I have for you an, a friend of mine who is just the sweetest soul. And the reason I'm bringing her to you is that she is a an end of life specialist. She helps people transition with, with, at the end of life, she's a, she's an RN. She, I'm, I'm going to get it wrong. She's a transitional life coach. She specializes in grief and end of life. And what I want you to hear from her today is what she has to say about grief, because the feeling that you're feeling is probably grief. Maybe you haven't named it yet. Maybe that word feels uncomfortable to you. Maybe it's a hard thing that you're experiencing. And so Karen Grossman is here today to help us learn more about this idea and Today, grief isn't something we need to fix, and it's something we can talk about. These are two juxtapositions of ideas. So welcome. Thank you, Karen, for being here. I really appreciate it. Oh, Jen, thank you so much for having me. I um, I hope I did your introduction justice because was, I know, was, it, you, you know you're fine. such an expert in this. <laughs> no, it was absolutely fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I think like everybody, we're a little bit of everything. <laughs> And, um, Especially but, you. <laughs> it, it was perfect. Okay. No, I was thrilled when you asked um, if we could do this because I always any opportunity to give grief a voice. Mm. Uh, it, it it just it means yeah. so much to me, and um, I think ultimately it means so much to other people. And going through what we're going through right now with this COVID virus and everything that we're being asked to do the the quarantine, the isolation, the unknown, um, the, the death and the sickness and, and everything, you know, there's a lot of grief going on mm -hmm. that we're not calling grief. Okay. And so to be able to have this opportunity to share about it, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure, I'm glad you're here. So if we're not calling it grief, what are we calling it? Oh, we're talking um, anger. We're talking um, some sadness. We're showing behaviors, maybe controlling behaviors, maybe trying to control how other people think, judgmental, mm -hmm. um, very kind of righteous indignation mm -hmm. um, on, on all different parts, all different ways, um, you know, and it's just coming out in different ways. But when we look at it, the fear, a lot of the symptoms we're experiencing are actually symptoms of grief. Okay. And we are, grief is just simply, um, it's just something that matters to you that is no longer there. Mm. And we're trying to exist without it. And that's what we're facing right now. I heard a definition once um, where, where grief is, this might be oversimplifying it, but grief is you want something to be different than it is. That's true. That's true. You know, you hear about, I just want to, and we've been saying this. I mean, how many people have you heard? Okay. When we get back to normal, yes. when we get back to normal and, and that's a lot of what grief is, you know, when somebody dies, we just want to go back to normal. We just want to be able to reach out to that person and talk to that person mm -hmm. and love that person and hug them. Mm -hmm. And we can't. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you know, that that's where so much of the grief goes until we're able to kind of live with this new normal and and people don't want change it's change is scary and if we live this this new normal are we saying that that didn't exist or that wasn't important enough to hold on to oh and so this gives us an opportunity just to integrate it and accept you know because that's what acceptance is it's taking what was and what is and kind of creating a dance with it so it's kind of like people are afraid that if I love the way, I really never thought about this. If I'm okay, uh, if I, if I learn to live with the grief, uh, this new normal, which mm -hmm. is, which is what you're saying, you're, uh, then maybe I'm saying that thing that I missed wasn't really that important to me. It's kind of like yeah. a self judgment. It is. And I, I've heard so much self judgment, um, recently, you know, people who, you ask them, how, you can see that there's pain in their face um, and you know there's personal things that they're going through right now. And you ask them how they are and they just say, fine. Mm -hmm. And when I ask them to go a little deeper than that, they're like, no, really, I got this. I'm mm -hmm. okay. Because it'll look, this is fine. We're doing fine, but we don't wanna show that we are going through all this pain and, mm -hmm. and we don't know what the heck to do. 
I don't know about you. I don't know what to do on any given day because every no. given day is different, even though they all begin to look alike. And you also don't want to hurt other people. Everybody's in so much pain. Everybody's mm -hmm. in different kinds of pain. Uh, everybody's struggling with something different. Some people aren't struggling that much. Some people are struggling terribly. You don't want to hurt people. And so I think we just don't know what to do with everybody's grief. But the reason I wanted to have you on is mm -hmm. to name, to learn what it is and to name it, I think is a very powerful thing. Yeah, no, I, I agree, you know, because people are walking around um, exhausted. Mm -hmm. They're um, just really oversensitive. I, I, I know myself, I've been oversensitive. I've been oversensitive to noise mm -hmm. and, and like any kind of movement. I was listening to a book and it takes place in uh, New York City in 1922. And their description of the neighborhood was so vivid and there's people and kids and everybody's just way too close together. And I just felt so uncomfortable. I wanted them all to move apart. And it's ridiculous. This is oh, that's great. Interesting. I mean, it is. I was really shocked by it. I was so sensitive and it really affected me. So um, our sense of normal is shifting. Yeah. And I, that's not a sense of normal I want to lose. <laughs> um, but I, right now we kind of are, um, but people are feeling lonely, even when they're in the house with their family, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's, there's no getting away. There's this inability of focus that I keep hearing about. And, uh, you know, people, you know, initially when this whole thing started, people said, okay, so I'm going to meditate and I'm going to have, <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do these exercises. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to, there's so much I'm going to do. And, <sighs> <laughs> and then, of course, we set ourselves up to fail because none of that's happening. You know, I, I, you were all like, what are you binging on? You know, Netflix, what's on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, I got it all. What can we watch? And, you know, it, it's not turning out what we look like. So then we judge ourselves because we're not getting the work done. Mm -hmm. People that are working at home are having trouble getting the work done. These people, God bless the parents that are homeschooling, oh, yeah. you know, are we doing it right? Are we doing it wrong? Well, we've never done it, so we don't know how to do it. Right. So there's so much self judgment, and um, and just I just want people to be kind to themselves. You know, just be gentle because this is unprecedented. We were never taught how to respond during a circumstance, a, a circumstance like this. This was never in anything we ever learned. Mm -hmm. So we're learning on the job, so to speak. Right. So the first step I'm hearing from you is to kind of name the feeling. Like there's all mm -hmm. these, you're calling, like you're, there's two different things here. You're saying there's symptoms, yeah. fear, loneliness, oversensitivity to noise, oversensitivity to people being yeah. in your space. So there's symptoms, but where the symptoms are coming from, the root cause is a grief. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. So I think that that's just helpful to have a name to put on it, right? Like you don't have to say, oh, I'm oversensitive. You could say, I'm just experiencing an oversensitivity. It doesn't have to yeah. become your exactly. identity. Exactly. I love that. Okay. So once you identify the symptoms that you're dealing with, and we kind of understand like, oh, I'm, I'm grieving for my old life. I'm grieving. And I also have no idea what the future holds. Like that's freaky. Mm -hmm. What is this new normal going to be? So once you identify that, what do you think the next step is for somebody who once they've kind of gotten to that place? What do you, what do you, where do you go with that? Well, you know, some of the, per, first and foremost, it's to feel it, to allow it to be whatever it is. You know, we're, we've been conditioned to not be uncomfortable. Yes. And so to feel it and to heal, we have, we have to honor it. We have to acknowledge it. So we talk about it. If we talk about what we're feeling honestly to somebody, they might be able to share honestly what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. They're fine, might say, yeah, I'm fine, but, you know, I'm a little scared, you know, or I'm fine, but, you know, I'm really struggling. I just want a hug. Mm -hmm. I miss a hug, you know, and mm -hmm. they'll be able to kind of communicate with that. So talking about it is, is crucial. And also, just as I said, be kind to yourself. Know that we don't know how to do this. You know, there's some grace and we can do it a little gracefully. And then there's the days that we do it so clumsy. And, and I know for myself, I've needed a piece of a routine. My day is not routine by any means, but I have kept my morning routine. And that at least gives me some sort of, um, we'll call it something I can control. Uh, okay. Um, 
<laughs> because we are in a state of powerlessness. And I think for many of us, we are looking for a piece of our lives that we can control even a little bit. And so my morning routine is something, uh, something I talk about with people all the time, pretty much every single day is avoid numbing the feelings. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's, even though that's our go-to, because that's how we've kind of trained ourselves, right? We're like you absolutely. said before, we are not conditioned to be in discomfort. So we're always seeking something else. So, so for me, when I am seeking to soothe myself, it's always food. Yeah. For some people, it's alcohol or shopping or TV, but mine is always food. And so I've had to be really aware of, uh, oh, this is a moment where I'm lonely or I'm bored. And so I'm going to go seek to fill yeah. my discomfort with, I'll go to the, there's nothing new in the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. And we get to put what's in the refrigerator because we don't get to just go out and say, here, I'm driving by this place. I'll stop. That's right. So we are picking what we are putting there. It's so but true. It's, it's so easy. You know, liquor stores are still deemed essential. I, I thought that was fascinating when you that know, happened. So I get it that there's a lot of that. So we are numbing. Shopping is still acceptable because Amazon is still out there. And um, yes. so people are still getting that. So just paying attention. Are we going to do it perfectly? Absolutely not. But just paying attention, you know, am I hungry? You know, am I, am I drinking too much? Am I spending too much? You know, it, it's able to pay attention to that. And then what are we going to do about it? And, and look at it. I'm a big believer in a gratitude list. Um, looking and my gratitude list is sort of shifted a little during this. I've been looking at what is this doing for me rather than to me. Can you explain and, that a little bit? Well, you know, what is this doing for me? It's, it's allowing me to be quiet. It's allowing me to slow down and see what is important. It's allowing me to see what is it I want versus what is it I need. Okay. It's allowing me to really focus on the people that are important to me in my life and and make sure I give them the space to um, to share what they need to, but also be able to share what I'm going through. It's 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 not happening to me, you know. It's mm. and that's just been so important because I could go into self pity. I know a lot of people self pity, and that's a dangerous place to be. There's not mm -hmm. a lot of healing in self pity. Mm -hmm. Not to say that we don't go there occasionally, because this, like I said, this is unprecedented, and um, you know, so that that's important to me. Um, what about, um, you just said there's not a lot of healing in self-pity, but I, I know that one of the things that causes people grief, I'm going to use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. I've always worked from home. My husband's always had, like, he still has his job. I still have my job. And so what sometimes causes me great grief is looking out into the world and knowing the, uh, the pain that other people, like, it makes me yeah. tear up to, to yeah. think about the pain that other people are in, um, I know this isn't a healthy place to be. So there's like the self pity, but there's also like the great feelings that you have about what other people, the empathy, right? The empathy. Yeah. So yeah, what do you do? Different. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> I, I think you're, you know, no, seriously. I, when I, um, I hadn't thought of this and I was listening to uh, Brene Brown and she talked about, we were doing prayers and she talked about, praying for the people who can no longer leave their house for safety. Like, see, my safe place is home, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I, so my safe place is home. There's so many people that look forward to the time when their spouse went to work or they yes. went to work so they could be safe. The children that were able yes. to go to school so they could be safe. And when I heard that, I mean, I'm feeling it in my body right now. Yes. yes. You know, it's um, because I, like you, I'm very fortunate. I'm still working. I'm working in the hospital a couple of days a week. Um, and I'm able to do what I need to do. And and there's so many people that don't. And, you know, we what can we do with that? We can do what we can do with that. We can donate. We can contribute. We can see where we can be of service. Because one of the things a lot of people are grieving is their lack of ability to be of service. Right. Things they took for granted that they just right, did their right, volunteer right. work there. Um, that became part of their identity. And now what are they doing? And uh, I love that you just keep putting names to it. And it's like, oh, right. Yeah. That's what I'm grieving. You just said you may be grieving your lack of ability to be of service. And 
just naming it. Well, first of all, saying it out loud to you is very helpful, right? Even though, and I'm still allowed to feel my feelings. Here I am still oh, with tears absolutely. in my eyes, right? I'm not trying to shove it away or bullshit myself that I don't really feel this, but to put a name on it is a, is almost like a relief. And that's my goal, you know, to, to create a global conversation around grief, because this is the one thing that we're all going to experience is grief, whether we're all going to know somebody who died, we're all going through this right now, and we're losing different parts of our normal Mine are different than yours, right? You know, yours are different than your husband's even, you know, even though you're living in the same house, they're different. Mm -hmm. And just being able to acknowledge that, talk about it. And, and my personal favorite is um, writing about it. Okay. I'm a big believer in, in uh, dialogue with my grief or my fear or whatever it is I'm feeling, whatever's coming to surface. I don't want to call it grief. I want, want to call it anxiety. Then I'll dialogue with my anxiety. And I write to it. And first it writes to me. It always starts, dear Karen, mm -hmm. you know, this is your grief and this is what I want you to know. Mm -hmm. And I read it and I hear it and I allow it. And then I respond to it. I write it back. You know, dear grief. Yeah, you're not getting away with that or whatever, you know, whatever I want to say back. For, and I think that works for everybody. That's just my opinion, though. I don't know that to be true. I can but imagine how that would be helpful. I think it's incredibly helpful, but other people communicate, they may communicate through uh, drawing or painting oh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. dance or creating music. You know, it's, it's whatever works for you. If that's how you tend to communicate, then by all means communicate that way. Just do it with your grief or with anxiety or just give it the space to be and see that it will not kill you. you know? Do you think that's the big fear for people that, if I acknowledge the grief, if I dissolve into sobbing, if I let the tears come, um, that I will never be able to crawl out of it again? Yeah. I think that's a lot of it. I really do. I think, um, I think that's a very big part of the avoidance. But again, back to what you're saying, it's just uncomfortable. Yes. You know, and if you think about how uncomfortable it is for us to feel our own, imagine trying to feel someone else's you know sure. which is why know, people say i'm fine i'm fine yeah I'm fine. yeah i got it i'm good because right. like you know we had said earlier um you know how many times you're walking oh how you doing and somebody says my heart is breaking i'm so scared <laughs> you actually have to stop and have a conversation you can't just keep walking you know you you have to stop everything stops in that moment yes and you have to be seen in that yeah moment. yeah so it's um and me, when I'm walking and somebody actually says that to me, I'm, I am so excited to stop. Well, that's your whole jam, right? Like, that, thank is. God the world it has is. you. So yeah. for the rest of us muggles who don't know much about grief, and we're not always, and people who aren't comfortable holding space for other people, and also the people who are uncomfortable being vulnerable or saying, oh, I'm having a hard time, or I'm feeling so much empathy that it's exhausting you or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what can we do on a day-to-day -day basis for ourselves and for each other? Do you have any little hints for us? Well, you know, honestly, it goes back to kindness. And okay. it sounds so, um, it, it really does being, first of all, kind to ourselves. Second of all, and this is something I have to practice, is being kind to other people when they're doing things I don't understand, you know, when their beliefs are different, when their um, behaviors are different, when their response is different, being kind anyways, because we're all showing up at the level of where we are. We're all showing up based on our own experiences, our own conditioning, our own perspective. And I, I really have to practice that because, you know, that's... It, it can be challenging, but I know when I am kind to people, no matter where they are, it helps me feel better. Yeah. You know, it I helps me feel better. I had about this uh, about two days ago. I was listening to somebody uh, go on about how judgy she felt about all of the people, the people who were protesting, mm -hmm. the people who weren't protesting, the people, like she was, she was like admitting how judgy yeah. she felt. And I... Um, have been in a place of not really like non-judgment, like kind of non-attachment. People are doing the best they can, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying that like dusting off my mm -hmm. halo, like it has been a lifetime of work. And I realized 
when I judge, it makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like I'm part of the solution. And that was a big aha to me, although it's bullshit, right? Like I'm not yes. part of any solution I when totally I'm judging, agree with you. especially to myself. I'm only hurting myself. But um, that was a big like, oh, that's why I've been judgmental because I feel like I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm wearing that badge of courage yeah. and I'm doing something to help by being a part of the solution. So yeah. uh, that was an interesting thing to learn to be kind and know that that's actually um, a way that you're it's a it's a form of taking action this kindness i think it is you know yeah. i truly think it is and i also want to be clear you know when you were saying earlier about you know giving people the space um to feel their grief and to talk about it and and to allow it and not everybody's able to do that so i want to help really it's okay it's yeah. okay if you can't you know um it's because it's hard it's you know I've done it you said it too I've done a lot of work on my own darkness my own grief my own pain and I mean we're talking years of work <laughs> in this and it's only because of that that I'm able to sit with others in their pain and their darkness and their grief you know if if and it's okay if you haven't done the work that's been a choice of mine mm -hmm. I've needed to I've I've, I've had to um, believe me, sometimes I wish I could just stop back. Do I have to dig a little more? But that's just <laughs> I who I am, and I have to accept it. And, uh, you know, I kind of surround myself with other people that do the same thing. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's that's my process. And But, yeah, so that I think kindness is one of the most important things. And just really looking at yourself honestly. Um, and, and, and being okay with what you see. Like, oh, I'm in yeah. right now. I'm feeling sad right now. Uh, I've been in a couple of conversations, just like not coaching conversations, just general conversations with friends who have found it very helpful to just have the word grief to put on what they're feeling. And that mm -hmm. has helped them kind of stop judging themselves so very much. Um, but sometimes people need more support than that. And I know that this is your expertise. How can people get into your world and be supported by you? I mean, you, anybody who's even watching this or listening to this can sense your vibe, which is so, um, like, it's like you really know how to hold a container for people, your kindness, your, your soul is just so kind. How can people oh, you. get more of you so that they can have that too? <laughs> You're so sweet. Um, well, my website is karengrossman.com, which is C-A-R-O-N-G-R-O-S-S-M-A-N. Com. I'm putting that in the comments. Okay. Yes. And um, also my Facebook is Open Door Coaching. Ah. And. Okay. That's at Facebook. Good to know. And I'm also on Instagram um, as Karen Grossman. It might come up as Open Door Coaching. Okay. I've never looked at myself, so it might come up as Open Door Coaching. And <laughs> so you're Karen on Grossman. Instagram too. Okay. Yes. And then um, how do you work with people? Tell us. So I know that people can get information from you, but how, how do they like actually work with you? Well, I do. I do one on one coaching. I can do that on the phone. I can do that with uh, Zoom. I can do I haven't done Skype yet. I've tried Skype. It doesn't seem to work for me. OK, um, we can FaceTime. And most, most often people just like to talk on the phone. Yes. And that seems to work well. Occasionally it works where it's face to face. Obviously, right now that's not going to happen. I also love uh, to lead workshops. Okay. Some of those are my, my favorite things to do to bring people together and work with this together. Because even if people are showing up with grief from different yes. ways, um, they're only able to share their own experience, strength and hope and what they've gone through. And it's a, it's a tremendous process doing it with a group of people. I can only imagine because it's like a collective energy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. And and people don't understand how much they have to offer from their own experience. Mm -hmm. You know, they think they're they're in such a dark place, but really they have come so far themselves. Mm -hmm. So and I and I'm actually looking into and I haven't created it yet, doing possibly a Zoom group during this time to just kind of let people come in and talk about where they are. It just uh, I haven't figured out the time and place and okay. and how to make that work right. So kind so. of like a forum. Yeah, that's what you yeah. imagine. So yeah. thanks, Ellen, for the for the Instagram search. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for your time and your expertise today and sharing with us 
um, just some strategies that we can realistically put in place. I really appreciate that. Well, thank you. Sure I anybody who's so watching appreciate. This will. I so appreciate you asking. And uh, as always, Jen, I love just chatting with you. So. I always love chatting with you too. Yeah. We don't get so. to see each other enough. So no, thank you. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> When when we get back to normal. <laughs> yes, when we get back to normal. My new thing is like when this, when we're through this, when we're through this, you yes. know, because I don't know what it's going to look like. Don't know what it's going to look like. Um, yes, everybody's saying, so Instagram is Karen Grossman or Open Door Coaching. And then Lisa says, coming together in solidarity. Yes, that's what that's what I think a collective energy can really do. Yes, so it's Absolutely. beautifully said. Thanks, Lisa. Thank um, you. I really hope this was helpful to the people watching it because I know it's always helpful to me to talk about this with somebody, especially who's an expert. So thanks again, Karen. I'll talk to you oh, soon. Thanks, Jen. And please feel free to reach out. You know, yes, I please mean, do. She, she means it. She means I really it. do. I really do. You know, it's... Uh, and it's all confidential. I, I mm -hmm. truly honor anonymity. So Sure, of course, yes. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.